First of all, thank you um, for making the time to be here. We know everyone is extremely overwhelmed with online events and sessions and webinars um, and holidays. So thank you so much uh, for being available uh, for this time slot. We, uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Um, we are going to start a series of technical partner trainings. We thought we would start with our Swiss knife, you know, Swiss Army knife, the 9904 card, which has so much functionality. And, um, you know, we, we thought it, this would be a good, good time to break into a lot of the details that most people don't even know are um, included in the card. Um, today, we're going to have two presenters. We're going to have our Executive Vice President of Engineering, Dr. Ciro Noronha. Dr. Ciro holds a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford, and he has worked in the compressed video of IP space for 25 years. So we're in very good hands here. Uh, we also have Chris Garcia. Chris heads all the sales initiatives for Cobalt in the West Coast and also all our efforts um, in Latin America. So thank you so much, Ciro and Chris, for uh, helping us out with the session today. I also wanna um, make a note that our two other VP of engineering um, people will, will be on this call. Ryan Wallenberg heads engineering and helps set uh, product development direction for Cobalt. Ryan will be on this call uh, to help with any questions um, you might have. We also have Kyle Winken, who is our VP of Farmware and he oversees the company's uh, embedded development and also helps work with customers to define requirements uh, for future projects. So we have the, the head of engineering team here and we're very pleased to have you all. And at this time, I will leave it with Ciro uh, so Ciro can get started. Thank you so much. And please make sure to text um, any questions you have throughout or speak up obviously anytime throughout the session and I'll be checking checking the chat box and bringing your questions um, to the speakers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna. So uh, normally I'm, I'm here talking about uh, compression stuff, but this is, uh, is gonna be different. We will talk about baseband. This uh, presentation is about the 9904 UDX, which is a very, very flexible processing card that Cobalt, Cobalt introduced. Um, and uh, basically, it does a lot of stuff for you. So uh, let's get started. Um, the first slides are going to be more of a, <laughs> I'm an engineer, I can say that, so more of a marketing fluff, right? But uh, the ultimate control part is important. You have control of a lot of stuff. You can make this car do a lot. And it's, it's very, very, very flexible. Um, co cobalt quality, our products, uh, our design built in the US uh, and very well supported. So you know you can count on cobalt if you need, if you need something, if you need an answer, we are always there for you. So this uh, 9904 uh, UDX card is ideal for both production control and mas master control. On pro production control, uh, we have full 4K resolution. Um, we have subframe latency, depending on what you do, right? If, you, if you're scaling, and, and maybe not, but in, in general, it's subframe la la latency and allow us, allow you to convert anything to anything. And uh, this is why this car is being chosen by a number of our customers and it, it's, it's seeing a lot of applications in trucks, in, in production trucks. Um, for master control, this is also used in many, uh, there's features that are used in many local broadcast stations. Uh, you have advanced audio processing, uh, all the Cobalt advanced audio processing is available in this new card. Um, you have uh, automated audio compliance, um, automated responses, and uh, work with SDI and IP. So it's, it's like very flexible. And uh, it's protects your investment, right? Because because you put it in and it'll be there for a long time. 
Um, this can be used across a variety of, of industries, um, sports, local TV, house of worship, government, corporate, education, any, any place you want to do something to video, process video, manage video, any, anywhere that you need 4K, this card is applicable. So this is a nice slide. Um, you see there's a number of badges here of what it does, and you will see those badges across the presentation. So as we talk about that, you will see uh, those, those little badges on the top, but the, you can see there's a lot of stuff that this, this card can do. Resolution change, frame rate change, a lot of HDR uh, functions, routing, um, and it, it is a software defined platform because those modules can be uh, added after purchase. So it's a platform, it's a, a, buy, a pay as you go thing. You, you have a relatively low cost of entry to get the platform, and then you can add processing modules. You can enable processing modules as you need them. Now, this, this slide's an Eiffel. It's a, it's a block diagram of the card. So, um, and by the way, you will get a copy of those slides so we can, <laughs> can go over them because this, this is, there's a lot here, but you can see here we have uh, six, six SDI inputs with a router. So it's processing one of them, but you have six, you can uh, dynamically switch. Um, you can have an HDI, HDMI input, you have MADI inputs, and these are all the blocks that can happen inside uh, processing, color correction, 3D LUTs, we're gonna talk a lot about that, um, HDR conversion, the interlace, the noise, uh, Format conversion, you have a very nice frame sync that can take uh, the open gear card references. Um, you can you have a key and, and you can add wings, and then you have an output video router with a lot of outputs. And on the bottom part here, you have a, a very flexible audio processing. You can take audio from SDI, you can take audio from MADI, you can take audio from AES, uh, you can decode, mix, uh, encode, and when we talk about encode and decode, this Dolby, right? You can do loud, loudness control. Um, you can remap those audios any way you want, and then they come out. They can come out embedded, they can, um, can come out muddy, and uh, we'll, we'll have a bit more about that later. Let's talk about format conversion. It's our any to any conversion. Um, uh, you, you have full control of the aspect ratio, the, the sharpness, the, the, the uh, progressive to interlace, interlace conversion. But the thing here is that uh, if you have a scalar, if you have the scalar enabled, you can have, you can define the output resolution and the card will always output that no matter what comes in. So you can, you can just decide, you, you, you select, and it will do both um, resolution and frame, frame rate conversion. So it's an up down cross converter, just like our, our previous products, but this one does 4K. So you can take, you can take something and convert it, uh, up converted 4K. So you have a consistent output independent of input and that's, that's completely automatic. Another application is uh, signal, signal conditioning in uh, facility or truck, that's an application of that. So you have different resolutions coming in, different frame rates coming in, different audio, audio coming in. You, have, you put one or more of these, these cards in an open gear frame um, and then you convert and output is always the same. You can do all those functions, resolution, frame rate, routing, HDR, and all of this we're gonna talk about uh, some more, uh, white color gamut and color correction. All of, the, all of those functions are available inside the card. So it, it does a lot for you. And of course, it's applicable to any of those industries. Cyril, um, one quick question here. Um, can the card convert between inter, interlaced and non-interlaced? Yes, it can convert between interlaced and non-interlaced, uh, interlaced and progressive. Um, Carl, do you wanna add anything to that answer? Um, just that it does contain a, a high quality um, uh, motion adaptive deinterlacer. So it's, it's a very good quality conversion from interlace to progressive. Great, okay. thank you. 
So um, another thing that uh, you can do is technology islands. Um, as you upgrade your plant, you can, you can localize and start up, upgrading in phases. So uh, you can use cobalt, cobalt products, especially this card, to wrap this around and, and do this upgrading phases. It's still taking the more of your legacy investment. Uh, that also gives your staff the, uh, the, the time to come and learn what they need to learn while you spread the cost over many years. So legacy content. So th this is an example of up conversion of uh, horizontal and vertical aspect, uh, aspect ratio. You can, that's the question that we had that we can deinterlace de and also denoise. And if it was four by three content, you can add wings so it doesn't look stretched, right? Um, I personally uh, hate when that thing happens when you're watching something and it's stretched. That's, that, doesn't, that doesn't look good. And we can do that uh, based on AFD. We can do adaptive motion, uh, interlacing, denoising, and um, you, you get something and, and it looks better after that. You can see that it was a little bit of uh, playing with the, with the image, but you, you get the point. That's, that's what the message we want to give. That's available to you. Uh, key view and logo. Um, you can put a logo in, in, in card memory and have the logo being inserted. Um, you can also use that as a downstream keyword, keyer for lower thirds or pro, pro, uh, promotion stingers. And you can add a second keyer. So you can see here uh, a logo, a keyer, and a second keyer right over here. Um, and those are all functions that you can add, add to the card later. So you can see my badges over here, keyer and logo. Uh, that's available today with a second um, logo and, and two, two keys. So with that, you can do um, anything in your transmission path. Um, and due to the fact that you have multiple inputs and, and multiple outputs, two fiber outputs and eight SDI outputs, you, don't, you, you even save that little DA at the end. So you can feed multiple things uh, to multiple places at the same time. And here you, you can see the, the IO panel. So you have eight SDI copies. You can have two SFPs with an optional uh, fiber module, and you also have HDMI. So it's uh, you're basically saving on money and space. HDR, HDR is the the rage right now. And as a matter of fact, it's uh, if you're gonna put money on something besides HD, HDR is what you get more the the best bang for your buck. Yeah, we all like 4K, and 4K is nice. But older guys like me, if you don't, don't sit very close, you don't actually see it. But HDR is what makes a, makes a big difference. So we have, uh, um, we have a lot of conversion functions. Uh, we, we implement a uh, uh, 3D LUP as lookup table. So basically, it maps the, the samples from one, one point to another. And we'll talk more about LUTs. Um, we, uh, that supports uh, the both the Wonder Look, Look Pro and Live Grade Pro softwares, um, more than 10 up, updates per second. And I think we did a very good job there because it's all dynamic and now clean, right? Uh, the other thing we have is intelligent tone mapping. It's uh, conversion from SDR to HDR. And you can ask me, well, uh, how, how's that possible? It, it, it's, it's a process similar to what uh, you, you had in old black and white uh, movies where someone comes and colors them is the same thing. SDR doesn't have the HR information, but you can fake it. And uh, the card can do that. And you, why do you do that? Because sometimes you need to import SDR content into an HDR workflow. So uh, the card basically makes up an HDR version of that SDR content. And you are in full control of that. There's an expert mode. And when you say, okay, I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna do, I, I, I am gonna fine tune that, that's your expert mode. Then you have a, a preset mode with uh, some experts that they got together, they, they selected that and it's basically having one of those experts inside the car. And then there's an auto mode, you say, I, I don't care, I just want the best thing. I wanna mess with it, just do it for me. There's this auto mode. 
Um, the other thing we do is a single layer HDR. I will have another slide about that. Um, it's conversion uh, between, uh, you, you, you start with an HDR signal and you transport it as SDR plus metadata to bring it to, to HDR. So the, uh, the example I give for that the, uh, is, is color TV, right? Black and white and color TV. When uh, color TV came up, you had the black and white signal and the color subcarrier on the side. So a black and white TV just took what it understood. And if you had a, a newer set that understood the color information, you, you had a color image. That's the deal with SLHDR1. You have an SDR signal and some metadata on the side. If you have an old receiver, fine, you got SDR. If you have something newer, it looks at that metadata and, and, and creates recreates the HDR signal. Uh, and this card can do that. So let's look at this 3D lookup table. It's basically, you, you start with an SDR signal and it's, it's a, it's a uh, base, you, you take, you use the uh, samples coming in and you look up and you take samples out. And that what maps an SDR signal into an HDR signal. And, and uh, as you can see, there is a lot of flexibility that you can have here. So there's many, many ways of creating these, these, these tables. And we have, we have support for a number of these in this card. One of these uh, lookup tables, the 3D LUTs, is the uh, BBC LUTs. So why do you use BBC LUTs? What does BBC have to do with it? Well, they have, the, they have a, a bunch of video experts. And they came up with uh, a number of uh, options for this SDR to HDR conversion. And why, why do I use a BBC LUT? Because it's consistent, because everybody uses them. So other people with other type of equipment will have the same, the same uh, result. So we support that and it's consistency between, system, uh, between implementation. So we can have um, over 50 options and you say, well, how is this easy to use? There's 50 to, to, to choose from, but it, it, it is because you don't have to think about the LUT, the, the LUT. It's already there for you and you know that everybody's using that LUT, that mode of conversion is getting the same result. Now, this card has got an HDI, HDMI 2.0 port. So you can, if you're doing all this processing and you wanna see, whoa, how does it look like before you, you send out or you wanna monitor what you're sending out, there's an HDMI port built into the card. Just connect to a monitor and you have full control of that HDMI port. You, so you can see exactly how the signal is looking like. And you don't, have, don't need the extra equipment. There's an HDMI port that you just plug a monitor there, plug a decent monitor, and you can configure in very, very fine detail what comes out on that HDMI. Bright spot detection. Yeah, that's, this is a, I love this slide. So um, this is something that the car does intelligently. So um, you see here in this, in this particular case, if you optimize for highlights, the ball is visible, but you can't see the trees. In here, you can see the trees, but you can't see the ball because it's too, too, too bright here. But with bright spot detection, which uh, you can see both, is like you can have your cake and eat it. You, you, you don't lose the detail here and you don't lose the ball here. So that is built into the card. It's an automatic function of the card. Legacy content. Uh, the first thing is the banding. So if you can see, I don't know how well this is gonna come out in, in, the, uh, uh, in the Zoom webinar, but you can see here on this side on the left side of the sun, you see the bands, right? And now, with the banding, it's a smooth transition. And you see banding is smooth transition. The other thing is that, that is available, the function that's available in this card is the noising. Um, you, you see the, well, I think this is a Jaguar, if I get my animals right. Uh, in Portuguese, would be a onça. Uh, you can see here a lot of noise and, uh, and then you can see the cleaned up image. So that's the kind of thing this card can do for you. SLHDR1, yeah, that's one thing that um, I, I like a lot, which is that uh, HDR transport. 
uh, the card can do a SLHDR encoder, which is it takes an HDR signal and converts to SDR plus metadata. And then you can transmit that and the, the card on the other side can convert, can convert the HDR back. And the, actually the SDR that comes out in this process is actually looks really, really good. So we can do both SLHDR1, which is, which is converts to SDR and has the metadata. There's SLHDR2 where the basis is, is HDR and still has metadata. And then SLHDR3 which the basis is, is HLG and then you have the metadata. And you can ask me, whoa, whoa, what is this meta, metadata stuff? The thing with HDR is that uh, not every monitor is the same. Not every monitor can, can um, display the full range of luminance. So instead of doing a hard clip, let's say a monitor can only do 500 nits. What does it do when it, there's a thousand nit uh, spot? Instead of doing a hard clip, the metadata allows the, the, the monitor to dynamically map the signal to its its uh, its capabilities, so that's why that's why there's metadata and that's why it's per frame, so the monitor can do a good job. And the and the, the nice thing about the SLHDR one is that the baseline is SDR. So if it's something that doesn't understand metadata, then you can't uh, uh, then it just ignores it, and you have a very nice uh, very nice SDR. Um, if you if you have a moment, if you're interested in that, in the Cobalt website we have two white papers. One about uh, an overview of this HDR technology, or the metadata and the options that you have, um, and uh, we also have a, 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 a technical paper about SL SLHDR one, uh, written by uh, myself, Carl, and Ryan, that shows you that if you compress an SLHDR one, you have actually a, a quality advance, a advantage or a bit rate advantage. So very interesting reading because that's not, uh, that is non, uh, non-intuitive. And now on this slide, this red uh, star here tells me that it's time to hand it over to my colleague, Chris Garcia, who's gonna talk about the, who's, who's gonna do the balance of presentation, Chris. Okay, let me, um, just one quick yeah. uh, moment okay. here. We got one more question. So before we, we move on, uh, maybe Kyle can answer this question. Uh, can the card insert EAS crawl audio ducking? The EAS crawl in terms of the, the text overlay uh, is not supported on, on this card. It was on the previous generation 9902. Uh, it's, it's more than technically capable of it. That's just not, not something that we've uh, done the work for at this time. Uh, the audio ducking, uh, there is gain control on a per channel basis uh, that could be achieved via uh, a GPI input could trigger a preset load. Um, the, the presets are, we support a concept called layering uh, where you can uh, create a preset that only affects a certain subset of the controls in the card. So for instance, if you only wanted to, um, if you wanted to create three different presets with three different uh, audio channel lineups or, or gain value use, you could do that. So in terms of the ducking, you could today uh, use a GPI to uh, uh, manipulate the audio gain on, on one or more channels and do shuffling. Okay, thank you very much. Does that answer the question? Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions so far regarding SCR, HDR, anything that we have covered so far? Yes, please, uh, the experts on the line and ready to answer your questions. And by that, I mean Ryan and Kyle. <laughs> okay, uh, it seems like we answered the question and um, thank you. So Chris, go ahead, take over. Okay, um, so are you gonna scroll it or? Yes, uh, just tell me when. Okay, so let's start with this uh, slide. This is uh, again, continuing on the uh, the color aspect of the card so this this particular one the uh, udx uh supports uh not only 4k color correction but also you know as, as Sarah has been mentioning uh other aspects of color correction for for other formats uh what is very unique about this card is that uh it's it's basically a, a software-based uh, color correction option that is offered uh within the card that has a wide range of controls and ability to control uh, the saturation and the color limiting, which is uh, one of the, the strengths of this card. 
Uh, and on top of that, many people use this uh, not only for just uh, uh, a regular color corrector, but in some cases, uh, some people may use it as, as a form of, of uh, an open gear uh, legalizer that has uh, you know, other features and controls to do that, but without the uh, expensive uh, you know, uh, price point of a, of a real full-fledged uh, legalizer. Uh, which is one of the unique things about this card that has all the built-in controls. And you can also create, let's say, a custom panel that, that addresses those uh, controls that you may want to have on, on the card. Next slide, please. Uh, for this, again, as, as we're talking about color, uh, this can be utilized in different scenarios. Uh, one key aspect of uh, this card is it's used in a live production environment. And then another, uh, you know, use that, that we see a lot with a lot of our customers is in a, in a setting where you have, uh, you know, multiple cameras, uh, uh, where you need to uh, do painting. Uh, for example, one of the, uh, uh, the ways this car is used along with the, uh, the control panel that's used for color correction is that um, you can utilize uh, the uh, car to paint cameras after the, uh, uh, let's say the studio and the talent have been uh, properly, uh, you know, set up in terms of the color exposure and all that, you can use this card to further assist in doing all that uh, by painting uh, each of the cameras and allowing you to have more control of, of those different uh, variables um, and, and the, uh, the the look of the overall picture. Next slide, please. And then one one very unique thing about this card that's that's actually very new for this um, uh, system is that. Now we have uh, Matty that uh, allows you to have uh, more capability, more density uh, by way of having you or allowing you to have uh, Matty in and out of the card uh, and working in conjunction with uh, AES and also embedded audio channels that you can uh, utilize to either uh, route or mix or, or, or demux. Uh, and it gives you that, that, that ease of, uh, of mind of being able to properly uh, get a certain amount of uh, audio channels from point A to point B without having to do a lot of wiring, which is often the case of uh, of a lot of the uh, the installers or people that are maintaining facilities with uh, many audio channels. This gives you that ability to be able to have a very dense uh, one cable, one coax that gets uh, audios from point A to point B or back the other way around. Next slide. So aside from uh, being able to give you that, that connectivity, uh, the flexibility, uh, this particular one gives you, uh, you know, the, the flexibility to give you more options uh, in terms of the audio, you know, embedding, the embedding, uh, being able to, to manage uh, different requirements. Uh, some of the standard features of this platform, including our non-blocking audio routing. Uh, it also has uh, the ability to, to measure and control the uh, inputs uh, that you may have connected to the card. Next, please. And what we're looking at here, this is uh, what you look at when you go into dashboard. This is the, uh, uh, it's a tab for the audio input output routing. Uh, essentially what this does is that allows you to have all the controls such as muting, inverting, uh, managing your gain. Uh, and it's basically some, sometimes, you know, people don't look at this as a, as a way to, to fully monitor in real time. Um, oftentimes they see that they see this uh, aspect of the car as to kind of sit and forget. Uh, but in reality, you can use this car to, to properly give you that control to, to be able to manage all your inputs and outputs and routing all your signals as you're, uh, you know, receiving the signal in real time. So it's a very powerful engine that's not just the, an add-on, but it's part of the, uh, the core design of the product. Uh, and then we'll mention some other options that are available for this in terms of the audio. Next slide. One of the key uh, uh, and unique uh, aspects of this is the ability to, to provide a down mix. So if you have, uh, let's just say a Dolby, but you want to come out a stereo, uh, this has a dedicated uh, you know, down mixer that uh, through that you know, input audio routing controls. Uh, that allows you to basically output uh, either one or two uh, mixes of uh, your inputs. Uh, and again, it's something that's built in and it gives you that, that much more flexibility. Next slide. In addition to the uh, down mixing, we also have uh, you know, input output flex mixer. So that allows you not just to, to create a down mix, but you can also create uh, multiple uh, uh, mixes. Uh, for example, 
Uh, if, if you look at this uh, screen, uh, we can create up to 16 custom mixes. Uh, we can combine sources, increase decrease volume for each source. And uh, as you can see, it's not only one mix, but multiple mixes uh, that can be uh, uh, set up and configured for output. Uh, and again, this is not, not a, uh, it's in, in, in speaking of the, uh, the down mixer is not a, uh, an option, but rather it's part of the, the main design of the car. Uh, next slide. Uh, one unique thing about this card is that we offer, um, as, as we're displaying in this uh, slide, we offer bulk audio delay, per channel audio delay, uh, and we basically can control that through the, the panels that we just looked at, which is uh, looking at the, uh, the frame sync and also the audio routing uh, for all that control. Uh, but one of the very unique things about this is that uh, you can independently adjust all the audio channels. So that's uh, you know, one thing that the card can, can apply uh, not just the bulk delay, but also independent audio delay if you wanted to. Uh, um, and on top of that, uh, it, it allows you to be able to control uh, different programs uh, within the embedded set of audios and align everything before you uh, you send the, the audios out. Next slide. And Chris, um, how, ma how many channels does Maddie accept? Uh, that was uh, what we had on the slide. That was uh, 64, so 64 input and output. OK, thank you. That and was then, the question. Uh, utilizing the, uh, the other AES uh, and embedded, then you can um, extract or embed depending on the needs of, the, of your uh, setup, your workflow. Thank you. Uh, and then one of the other uh, aspects of this, uh, as I mentioned, uh, aside from the core and, uh, and default uh, capability that the car offers, uh, we also have, as, as we're calling this, the software-defined audio options. Um, some of these are like being able to, to have loudness, uh, multi-channel uh, capability, up mix, uh, the flexible mixer. Um, we can also encode and decode Dolby. And these are, uh, once you have the card, you can essentially activate a, a license. And if, and if before the customer commits to the product, we can also issue a temp license. So that if they wanted to validate and prove uh, that there is in fact uh, the capability within the car to do such you know a function, uh, we can we can generate a temp license that allows the user to to properly test it out. Uh, and obviously, the idea with, with the license is that the, the customer uh, once they activate it's a perpetual; they own it. Uh, but what's nice about this is that a customer doesn't have to purchase all these licenses up front. Uh, but rather they can purchase these uh, after the fact and be able to have uh, the flexibility to do so um, and, and being able to, to, uh, to not be committed to, to the, the functionality up front. Next slide. And for uh, Dolby decoding, uh, we essentially have different uh, uh, software options that allow easy licensing, uh, licensing options uh, for Dolby uh, Digital, Dolby Plus, and Dolby E, encoding and decoding. Uh, we can also process metadata by embedding it or de-embedding the, uh, the metadata uh, and being able to uh, uh, transport Dolby through any plan without uh, losing any crucial information if that's the objective. Uh, any other application, for example, it's uh, being able to decode and encode uh, uh, audio and being able to monitor before you do any ATSC uh, transmission. That's, uh, again, one key aspect of, of this uh, product. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we can activate uh, most of these uh, you know, different license options within this, this one card. Next slide. Uh, on top of the, uh, the being able to process Dolby, uh, we can uh, automate and control our surround sounds uh, within the same uh, you know, interface, the audio interface or the tab. Uh, so we basically use, uh, you know, leading a, a license or, or, or algorithm provider, which is linear acoustics in this case for the upmax, uh, upmixing uh, for, from stereo to uh, 5.1. Uh, this allows us to have a very uh, robust and reliable uh, mechanism for, for having uh, the, uh, a proper upmix. Uh, by utilizing, a, in this case, linear acoustics, we're able to up mix, uh, let's say uh, an original master, and then pass it on through the car without any processing. Uh, we can combine both an upmix and a regular a native, uh, you know, 5.1. Uh, 
Uh, and then on top of that, we're able to uh, properly uh, monitor and, and configure any uh, center channels around and also being able to, to make adjustments as needed. So again, for that part, we, we're using uh, the linear acoustics uh, for the upmix uh, and for the uh, encoding and decoding uh, of Dolby. We're obviously you know, using the Dolby license for that. Uh, next slide. Uh, for the loudness uh, part, uh, and in the other platforms, we typically uh, would uh, be recommending the linear acoustics. That's in the older platforms for this particular one. Uh, we're working with uh, uh, what is the, the, the Dolby uh, real time loudness uh, control, which is uh, the RTLL license that, that we offer. So if you had a DSP license, um, or not license, but the, the, the platform, uh, the version of, of this card, you essentially would have have the ability to activate any of these licenses. Uh, what's good about the uh, the having the DSP uh, version of the UDX card is that now you can activate, as I said, you can uh, get a temp and test it out, or you can activate the uh, the real time loudness monitoring or leveling uh, for this card at any time. Um, and again, we do this uh, with um, the uh, ability to also encode and decode Dolby. Uh, but what is good about the uh, this this particular license is that uh, it, it really helps to match uh, and target the LKFS, uh, Dolby values for, um, for your loudness uh, levels, and it keeps you in compliance, uh, especially if you're doing the ATSC A85, uh, you know, loudness uh, compliance uh, requirements. So that's, that's one aspect of this card that, that gives you that, that much more flexibility. Uh, next slide. In addition to be able to normalize and uh, stay in compliance with the audio encoding and decoding the, uh, the audios, uh, this also supports uh, multiple languages that can be supported uh, within an HD, 3G, or 12G uh, system. Uh, this uh, can support multiple audio uh, channels, making it perfect for any uh, you know, environment where you require to have multiple languages. Uh, with, within those requirements or the requirements to have multiple languages, um, you can provide an upmix, uh, loudness processing, encoding, decoding, uh, and give you a very robust uh, a way to, to meet those requirements. So again, it's, it's all done within the same car, so it's just a matter of uh, activating those different licenses. Next slide. And then one of, once you have, let's just say the DSP version of this car, uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's got all those different licenses that we can activate, uh, the DSP allows you to have up to eight different separate processing uh, uh, paths or, or channels that, that you can utilize to create a custom workflow for every of those audio requirements. So what's very unique about that is that uh, the car will you know, try to separate and process everything as if you had eight different uh, you know, independent uh, uh, platforms that are processing your audio. So. Uh, what is very unique about things is that these are floating licenses that you can uh, essentially um, utilize uh, by by activating any of those uh, different tabs uh, and give you that that much more flexibility to to um, process any of those audio requirements. So again, this is if you have the DSP version of the car, because we do have uh, different models. It's not just the 9904UDX, but it, in this case, it's the 9904UDX uh, DSP. Uh, card that gives you that flexibility. Um, and if you, let's just say a customer has a regular uh, 9904 UDX, you, you can always um, uh, discuss with the factory to see if we can upgrade the, uh, the car to give you that, that DSP uh, functionality. The next slide, please. Then an, a very new feature that, that was added to this uh, card was the, uh, uh, what we call the AV alignment test. Uh, this was uh, basically done uh, to help, you know, uh, mitigate and, and look at problems uh, with, uh, you know, being able to track any issues uh, within a facility uh, where you have, uh, you know, uh, sync issues, so audio and video sync issues. Um, what is good about this is that it allows you to measure the AV offset through uh, different, um, you know, it's like a, a way that, that was built into the car where it's, it's, uh, it's automatic, uh, you select it. And it goes out and, and it tests uh, your in, your input and your output uh, signals. Uh, what this is it's doing, for example, if you look at this little uh, uh, diagram, it, it basically generates a test pattern uh, with tones uh, 
and it, and it looks at, uh, you know, to see if it's in sync and it'll take an alignment or measurements and then be able to give you a uh, feedback uh, in real time to, to let you know exactly where you're at. And then you can maybe utilize, uh, you know, a more robust, uh, uh, like a test instrument to give you the, the confidence that in fact you are or not, uh, you know, in alignment uh, with your audio and video. Uh, but it's it's a nice feature to have that that you can uh, activate uh, at any time within the card to give you that much more confidence uh, if you're setting up or troubleshooting uh, the card or the signal within your facility. Next slide. So aside from all the other like up down cross conversion, audio color correction, all the stuff we talked about, uh, this card has a, a proper frame sync. So if any any of you guys are familiar with the uh, uh, with the 9922FS, uh, this uh, essentially provides the same uh, or similar uh, functionality in terms of the frame sync. Um, obviously, this takes it up a notch higher. It's not just, you know, for HD or 3G, but it takes it up to uh, 12G. Uh, and what is also very unique about this is that, uh, you know, you have all those controls. So if you're not, you know, working with, uh, you know, with, with the requirement where you need to have just the frame sync. I mean, the car can be utilized for anything else, but if let's just say you're having uh, timing issues within your facility, uh, you know, you can rest assured that this card has that ability to give you that, that uh, the frame sync and keep everything in sync. Uh, you can take the reference or, or even uh, just, uh, you know, you can bypass or, or you can engage uh, with a simple uh, drop down tab uh, within dashboard. So Again, this not only provides all those nice features that we just discussed, but it's also a proper frame sync that can be utilized for just frame sync or can be uh, used in conjunction with everything else. Next slide. Um, so again, because it is a, uh, it's like a, as Susanna mentioned at the beginning, this is like the the ultimate you know army Swiss knife. Uh, this you know will give you the uh, the conditioning. Uh, It'll provide all that that uh, you know the any processing that you require within your facility before you go out to transmission or you uh, you, you you deliver the content. And this will give you that 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 peace of mind to to give you that that extra you know you can uh, uh, provide uh, as an example uh, valid SAV or EAV uh, codes. Uh, let's just say if there's a signal loss uh, or if you have uh, downstream devices that that may not lock. I mean, this is a very good uh, system that I not only uh, provides all that functionality, but it also gives you a like, peace of mind. Um, so again, this is uh, uh, not just a, a multi-processor, but it can also provide uh, that, the confidence downstream if, if needed. Uh, next slide. Uh, and then also uh, discussing uh, the automation uh, and this particular platform uh, wrapped uh, around all the functionality on the UDX platform. Uh, we offer a, a powerful control and management uh, engine that provides a high degree of automation. So there's a lot of, uh, for example, we can uh, uh, engage and set up this car in a, in a proper network uh, environment. And uh, it's got all the GPIO controls. Uh, there's different events uh, that you can set up within uh, specific tabs and dashboard. There's also presets. Uh, you know, very similar to all the other products, but again, just taking it up a notch higher to 12G. Uh, in addition to that, we also support different protocols such as like the RESTful API. Um, and uh, and we, we, you know, this is a very flexible uh, platform that has a lot of those uh, sort of, uh, you know, spaces uh, available for, for future improvement or, or uh, development. Uh, and, and again, this, this is uh, leveraging a lot of the uh, uh, technologies and, and uh, sort of expertise that, we, that we've uh, gained over the years, uh, but now uh, as part of this product. And I th think that's, that's uh, is that the end of it, Cyril? That's it. Yes. Thank Sounds you, Chris. Good. Um, let me see here. Um, we have a couple of questions. Um, thank you so much, uh, Chris. Does anyone have any specific questions on what Chris just um, went through? Because we have a couple of um, more generic questions here. The first one is, uh, recently Cobalt launched the 9904 MPX, MPX, MPX stands 
uh, for multipath card, by the way. Um, what are the main differences between the 9904 and the 9905? Uh, Kyle, if you can take this one, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, the, the 9905 uh, MPX um, is a uh, quad processing path. So four independent video processing paths and, and audio uh, processing paths. The biggest difference is the, the quad path card is HP only. So it will do uh, 3G SDI and down on all four channels. It does not do, uh, it does not do 4K. Um, at this point, the, the base offering for that card uh, includes the, the the same scaler uh, frame sync and audio processing capabilities as on the, the 9904 card that we've just been talking about. Uh, it also includes the uh, or has the the ability to do the 3D LUT engine on all four paths as well. Uh, some of the other uh, HDR uh, processing options like the uh, ITM and SLHDR uh, those are not in there yet. Um, that is something that's still kind of a work in progress. Um, those are probably the biggest differences, though. But again, it's a, it is a, a, you know, you get four independent processing paths. You can have different formats, different video formats uh, on any of the four inputs or outputs. Uh, you can shuffle audio between the paths. Uh, if you've got Maddie coming in, you've got you know 64 channels of audio coming in on Maddie. You can embed that on any or all of the four video outputs, uh, vice versa, you can, you know, take Maddie from, or uh, you can de-embed from all four video inputs onto a single Maddie, uh, kind of group your audio together that way. Uh, the logo uh, option is supported on all four paths. So if you want to put up a station ID bug on four different uh, videos, you can do that simultaneously with a single card. Um, and I think, I think that's about it. I can go into uh, and Kyle, uh, can you describe the uh, embedding and de-embedding and uh, light delay for for the uh, when you have AES uh, embedded and also Maddie in and out of the cart, uh, how that works with the uh, the O5? Yes, on the O5. In comparison to the O4, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Th thanks. Yeah. On the on the O5 on the 9905. The AES and the MADI are all synchronous to the output timing of the card, so uh, there, there's no uh, there's no SRC uh, to an individual input video path. So um, that's the biggest difference there. But within the in terms of the the four video paths, you are you do get the same controls that you get for the 9904, meaning you can do embedded audio channel shuffling. Uh, you can do a, a per channel audio delay. Um, you can actually uh, embed and de-embed uh, SDI audio channels between the four inputs. So if you've got uh, an input video on path one and you want to de-embed audio from that and embed it onto one of the other or all of the other videos, uh, you can do that. Um, each of the four paths, the four paths uh, includes uh, some of the same kind of advanced audio processing features we have like the, the down mixer and the flex mix. Um, and yeah, I think that about covers it. Sounds uh, good. Um, do, do you have another question, Chris? Uh, yeah, another question is, uh, Kyle, could you explain the uh, HDMI input capability in the UDX and how that also manages the audio and video? Uh, yes, this is on the 9904. Right. Uh, yes, we do support uh, HDMI uh, 2.0 um, input. Um, uh, so you can do 4K60 there, and uh, that can be uh, converted to any of the any of the formats that are supported uh, on the 9904. So anything 4K down to SD, um, uh, we do allow. Uh, we, we do accept all eight channels, the HDMI audio, and those can be mapped onto um, any of the channels of the outgoing SDI, um, as well as the outgoing uh, HDMI. So you you can use this to um, to uh, to do HDMI you know cross conversion if you wanted to do you know uh, up or down conversion on HDMI you can do that as well um, and with that you can also get you know the simultaneous HDMI and SDI output. Thank thank you, um, Kyle. So in a nutshell, the 9904 is a single channel HD or 4K, 
and the new 9905 multipath card is a quad HD card that can also be upgraded to 4K. We will be planning um, future training sessions and the 9904 will be uh, the star on the next presentation. So this way we can do comparison charts and uh, make all this that we're discussing now uh, more visual for all of you. Um, another question here is, would the 9904 and uh, Ryan can answer this one. So we get to hear from Ryan too. Would the 9904 fit in the new BBG 1300 standalone um, frame that Cobalt has launched uh, recently? Uh, that that uh, answer is yes. Um, the BBG 1300 standalone frame uh, can support a two slot IO module. And we do have a couple of two slot IO modules available uh, to use with the 9904. Um, there are a few different difference. There's a few differences on the 9904 two slot module. Some we call even slots, which means if you were to put it in a 20 slot frame, it'd be an even slot number. Uh, others are called odd slot modules, which means the card goes in the odd slot. Uh, in order for a two slot module to be used with the 9904 in the BBG 1300, you need to use a odd slot Rario module. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's a question here about frame sync. Um, on the 9904, is it a single channel of frame sync, either 4K or HD, Ryan? Uh, that answer is yes as well. The 9904 is a single channel device. And uh, e even if you're quad 4K HD or quad 4G, I'm sorry, quad link 3G going in, uh, we convert that to a single link 4K signal, and then that goes into the frame sync, but there's only one frame sync running on the 9904. Sounds good. Please type in the, your, the chat box if you have any other questions. Um, uh, if you would like um, to hear any specific subject uh, covered in the next training session, should be six to eight weeks from now, please let us know. Send any of us an email asking uh, for what specifics you'd like to, you know, for us to cover. We will be sending out this presentation to everyone who registered for the webinar um, later today or on Monday, we're gonna be publishing this recording on our YouTube channel and we'll send out the link to everyone so you guys can have this recording as a reference. Um, let's see, any, any other questions from anyone at this time? Chris, can you think of anything? Um. um no i mean I, I we we did touch on the uh just maybe i wanted to mention it uh since i think i think a lot of our or the people that are on this call may not be aware of but just uh just wondering if uh, anybody's um uh, working with any um of the, the the LUT capability like such as the 3d LUT and all that and if uh what's the preferred uh, like third-party software that, that you guys may encounter or that your customers may encounter so that we can also make, uh, you know, any reference material or, or just, uh, you know, with the card and that software. Because I think sometimes people ask, but we may be more focused on other software rather than the one that most people use. There's, like, a, you know, there's, yeah. there's an additional question here um, oh. about... Um, HDCP. Um, the question is, uh, I know the question was private, but uh, I think we, we need to answer that in, in public. Uh, the question is, can HDCP disabled on the HDMI input? And um, I'm going to let uh, either Kyle or, or Ryan, can you answer that? Yeah, I can take this. So we have had conversations with the HDCP. Sorry. Here. <laughs> Oh, hold on one second. Okay, had to mute my phone. Um, yes, we had um, we have had conversations with the HDCP group, and there is no way to legally defeat HDCP. If you defeat HDCP and you go to a SDI output or a uncompressed um, signal out, uh, uh, and it's in the clear, uh, you are technically uh, bypassing content protection, and you're doing something illegal. So. Unfortunately, there's there's no way we can legally offer uh, 
HDMI input with HDCP that then gives you an SDI output or an HDMI output that doesn't have HDCP on it. Thank you, Ryan. It's got to have it. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any other questions, private or public? This is the time. Um, again, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. We're, we're finished right at the hour. Uh, this recording will be available very shortly. And don't forget to send us a note uh, letting us know what part of the product line or specific product you would like us to cover next time. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, safe and happy holidays to everyone.